Hi kids, Mrs. Wiedemann. I'm going to read a book that's called Historical Fiction. It's based on what happened back in history. It's called Home in the Woods and it's by Eliza Wheeler. This is my family. Marv 8, Rich 10, Ray 14, Mom 34, B 12, Eva 3 months, Dal 2, Lowell 4, Marvel 6. This is me. So the character that's telling the story is Marvel. Dad lives with the angels now, and we need to find a new home. Summer. Deep in these woods, we find a shack, all wrapped in tar paper. It's hot outside, but the shack looks cold and empty, like I feel inside. You never know what treasures we'll find, says Mom. In the shack, we don't see any treasures. Rusty oven, dusty shelf, pot belly stove, box springs, empty crates, wooden table. But Lowell and Eva find a door in the floor. Below is a root cellar filled with old glass jars, a tin pail, a pile of rags, and a pitcher pump that goes up and down, up and down, and out comes a stream of cool, clear water. This place will do fine, says my big brother Ray, but it doesn't seem like much of a home to me. Outside the ground is a blanket of rotting leaves. Dal and Bee dig underneath to find soft, dark, rich soil. The seeds from our old garden can go here, says Bee. When, when the crystal rains fall, our seeds slowly take root. Some treasures take a little time, says Mom. The songs of happy frogs echo through the trees. The woods are a tangle of birch, poplar, pine, and sugar maple. Marv finds the secret paths of the white-tailed deer woven all around. The paths lead us to a twisting trout creek, an empty beaver lodge, and a blooming berry patch with sweet jewels of blue and red. We will fill our pail, Marv's hat, Ray's bag. Lowell fills his empty belly. Our laughter echoes through the trees. Autumn. Cool winds come and spice up the air and fill it with the rust and ruby leaves. Mom walks into town to do chores for pay. So we take care of chores at the shack. Rich writes them on paper slips that we draw from a hat. Split wood. Pull weeds. Pick veggies. Hang clothes. Wash up. Sweep some. We fill the glass jars with mum's berry preserves and the harvest from our garden. We save them for winter and stack them in the cellar like buried treasure. When we need more supplies, we head to Bennett's General Store. The windows are full of marvelous things. Catalog dresses, pearly sweets, shiny tools, wind-up toys. But mom's chore money can only buy some basics. Baking flour, soap flakes, lamp oil. We say nothing at all on the long walk home. Back at the shack, we invent a new game, General Store. We can buy anything we want. Rich is the baker. Marv pumps gas. 
B sells fine hats. Lowell is the jeweler. I display mud sweets. Our laughter echoes through the trees once again. Winter. The days are dark and bitter winds blow. Ray and Marv trek out to hunt for food. B huddles in the lamp's glow. Mom teaches her that scraps put together make colored patchwork. I huddle by the warm stove. Rich teaches me that letters put together make words, and words put together make stories. Most days, Ray and Marv return from their hunt with nothing at all, but tonight they are proud and tall. We plunder our store, and Mom works the oven like magic. A feast for the kings and queens of the forest, Rich says. Soft loaf bread, baked green beans, wild turkey stew, blueberry pie. Snow falls in a blanket of diamonds all around the shack. The jack pines sway above as we fall asleep to get close together, but Mom stays awake into the night. Whispering to the stars. Spring. After many months, warm, fresh air comes pouring into the shack. The cottonwoods are all in bloom. Me and Bee carry Mom's loaf bread and blueberry jam to the neighbor's farm. Erickson Farm. They fill our pail with milk and our hat with golden eggs. We go slow and careful on the path home. B calls out the flowers' names. Wood violet, dwarf iris, pink lady slippers, pitcher plant. The songs of happy birds echo through the trees. Here in these woods, I find my brothers and sisters, our mom and me, Marvel. The shack, all wrapped in tar paper, looks different now, warm and bright and filled with love. Filled up with love. Like I feel inside. Author's note. In the fall of 1932, during the Great Depression, when my grandma Marvel was six, her family was evicted, that means thrown out, from their home in Bennett, a small town in northern Wisconsin. Her father, a munitions factory worker, began moving their belongings into an abandoned tar paper shack deep in the woods, but he died of cancer before being able to spend a night, single night there. His wife Clara, the 34-year-old thir daughter of Norwegian immigrants, was left to care for their eight children ages, three months to 14 years old. With a little aid from the mother's pension, an FDR program, and many gen and some janitorial work, they learned to survive mainly by growing vegetables, picking berries, she canned 40 quarts of blueberries each year, fishing for trout, and hunting squirrel, rabbit, and deer. Neighbors also shared in any ways they could during those lean times. My grandma's family lived in the shack for about five years. I grew up hearing stories from that time, of that time from my grandma Marvel how her mother was able to make delicious food out of whatever they had, how they'd come up with their own games since they had no toys. My grandma wants you to know that their favorite game called General Store in this book was really called The Game. There are many stories of below zero degree winters made especially harsh by the weather coming off Lake Superior. My great uncle Lowell recalled cutting firewood inside the shack on those days in order to continually feed the stove. What an incredibly hard time it must have been, and yet they recall the memories from those years as some of their best. They all had purpose and found inventive ways to work together and make it fun. At the time of this writing, four of the eight siblings are still with us. 
Eva, 87, Lowell, 91, Marvel, 93, and Rich, 97. This book is inspired not only by the stories from their childhood, but by the entire generation that experienced the Great Depression. They will soon be gone, and if we haven't yet collected their stories, the time is now. What's your family story? I invite you to share it with the world and with me online at wheelerstudio.com. The end.